ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The main way Satan has deceived billions is by lying to them through his ministers of lying lips. They are blind leaders of the blind, professional liars who have been trained to do so. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Biblical Christians, we know that lying is sin which will not be found in heaven, as Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 proclaims, that all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Many take this sin lightly and think that this is a joke, and thus this is why so many are led astray by lying lips, because they think it can be bypassed. This is one reason why the Lord has sent a message to come out from among them. Be separated to touch not the unclean things, and he will be a father unto us, as 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 and 18 proclaims, and you shall not receive of the plagues in the end. Because of the blind loving their lying leaders over a plain thus saith the Lord, they are once again entangled therein. They have rejected the ways of righteousness themselves, connecting themselves to a lie through lying about others, lying about doctrinal things, and now false prophecies. Thus it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. There are way too many pretenders in the world today. Thus, God's people must watch out constantly. If man is going to be deceived by man today, they will be taken by Satan in the season of his appearing, for sure, where it is recorded in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. This is where God will send them even a more strong delusion, because they loved not the truth, but loved the lies of man. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. So, we must be vigilant in our connection with Christ. How do we become vigilant? By keeping and staying in the Word of God. The Word of God is Jesus Christ, and He is our path and safety. Psalms chapter 119, verse 105. Christ is pure, holy, and undefiled, and through our connection with Him, we obey and follow what the Word says, and thus we will be sanctified by the truth and depart from the lies. John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Satan has many agents, ministers of unrighteousness, by which he works to secure his blinded subjects. These ministers have a form of godliness, but they deny the word of God, and thus they do not know Christ as being the word of God. How do we know they are genuine or not? How are we going to test the spirit today? Matthew chapter 7 verse 16 tells us, You shall know them by their fruits. One of the avenues through which we can detect a false minister is through his lying lips, which is a tongue of poison like the tribe of Dan, which is a true aching in the camp, or shaft which blows away in the end when truth comes. If there is any man who claims he is a minister of God, yet publicly declares lies, he is not who he proclaims to be. Matthew chapter 12. For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. As a true biblical watchman for these last days, I must help everyone see the truth. And this ministry of Vern Bates is leading a lot of people down the wrong road. And this is why we need to expose them for what is going on and the ministries that are connected with them. Like the SDR Church, which believes that Vern Bates has the original writings of the prophetess Ellen G. White, and thus everything else that she has written out there in this world that is released to the public is corrupted, which to a point there is a lot of corruption going on in the world 
in these books that they even proclaim are the original writings of Ellen G. White when we can also see that a lot of things that are being stated in these books cannot be backed up, supported, or verified by scripture. The original writings of Ellen G. White can only be determined by a plain thus saith the Lord from the scriptures. That is a fact and that is how we determine whether something is true or not not because Vern Bates proclaims this. Again, we must verify everything through scripture whether or not something is true and not trust in the words of man. So, the first and second video we most recently did about Vern Bates, I was publicly labeled as a slanderer for exposing this man who is deceiving now thousands. Any children of God can see this Vern Bates is connected to confusion. Thus, I must warn the thousands of people who are being blinded by this man and the SDR leaders and members who are connected to Vern Bates and expose them. After we had exposed Vern Bates denying Jesus Christ being the Word of God, public statements were declared about Vern Bates, which upon verification ended up being lies. Let us give a few examples here. Number one, the SDR leader had publicly declared twice, quote, I called Vern many years ago to ask him about an error I found in a certain chart he used to sell and he told me on the phone that he stopped selling the chart years previously because of an error he found in it. As I recall, he also told me he alerted as many as he could that he made a mistake by selling it. Vern was never afraid to admit when he was wrong. If Vern were alive today I am sure he would either admit his error or explain his thoughts in more detail regarding that statement in the video as it has actually caused confusion for some. Here is a screenshot in this video of the comments section that is entitled You Cannot Buy or Sell in California. And in the reply section you can see that this SDR leader, the founder of POGM, says again the fact remains, however, we do not promote Vern Bates or his daughter. We promote the books. Vern Bates is just a man who can err. In fact, he told me years ago that he had erred in his video about the 2520 prophecy. So, as you can see, this SDR leader openly declared that Vern Bates admitted that he erred in his 2520 prophecy chart, which is just another false teaching of Vern Bates. And if you notice here how this SDR leader proclaimed they do not support Vern Bates, but only his books, well, this 2520 false prophecy is a massive book. And by SDR claiming they only support the books and not Vern Bates is absolute confusion on SDR's part. Because when you promote Vern Bates' ministry, you actually promote the errors spewing from this ministry. And to expose things even more, we even have a clip of this SDR leader claiming how he was a very good liar before he was even a supposed Christian. See, because by, before I was a Christian, I was really good at lying, and I, well, at least I thought so. And to have a little insight of what this 2520 is all about, it is not even a timed prophecy, which is aired number one among the many. The word times in the concordance for this supposed prophecy that they base Leviticus 26 is not a literal year as like the time and times and a half a time of Daniel 12.7 which represents the 1260 timed prophecy. So if Vern Bates truly had repented of this error then he should have taken it down from his website which all these years it has remained on the website and his daughter is still selling it till this day. See this clip here. Let's see what Bill Munsell has to say about all this who actually was with Vern Bates in most of his videos and was very close to Vern, which you can see in this screenshot is Bill on the left of Vern, who is on the right. Bill Munsell's friendship with Vern is very well known. Bill can tell you the truth about Vern's stand about his position regarding the 2520 prophecy, which we can even prove is full of error. Here you can see a screenshot of Bill Munsell in this video where he even says, No, Vern did not change his mind on the 2520. I was with him before he died. And for further proof that Vern Bates never changed his position about his 2520 prophecy chart, you can see how the video is still up on YouTube till this day. 
And what makes this worse is how the SDR leader said and even knew that Vern Bates had erred in his 2520 prophecy chart, but yet continues to promote Vern Bates' ministry, tithes to it, and sends money to their publishing house, which is not doing the work of the Lord because there are false statements, false prophecies, and false doctrines in that publishing house ministry. And when you understand the truth, who these men are, you must depart from them, or you yourself will be accountable for supporting such lies. See, because by, before I was a Christian, I was really good at lying, and I, well, at least I thought so. So until next time, brethren, keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus, and stand true for the Lord, keep your eyes fixed on Him, keep yourself in the Word of God, and He will set you free, and he will set you upright, and you will not be deceived by these ministries of lies in these last days. Peace. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And as we all know, the Word of God is very clear as to who the Word is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. As biblical Christians, we know that Jesus Christ is the Word of God, and he did come in the flesh as the Word of God. And the scriptures are clear of all those who would deny that Jesus Christ is the Word, and thus did not come in the flesh. They are antichrist. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. As many of us know, there are a lot of ministries out there that proclaim they are doing the work of God for these last days, but yet they have been yoking up with ministries like this man called Vern Bates that is taking a lot of people down the wrong road. Take a look at what he is proclaiming in these last days. John 16 and we're on verse 13. How be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth Oh, that's not a cry message to me. John 16, 13. Okay. Then it says, For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Well, let's see what Jesus did when he walked. Exactly the same thing. Then who is the Word? The Father. The Father is the Word. It's not Christ. Because the Father gave the words to Christ, and Christ gave to the prophet, or to the angel, they gave them to the prophet. The Father. The Father's the word. It's not Christ. It's not Christ. And so, to be clear, this man's name is Vern Bates, who has openly denied Jesus Christ as the word of God, which we all know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he is the word that was made flesh as the word of God. But this man openly and boldly proclaims that the scriptures are lying, thus making himself an antichrist who is working against the truth. Then who is the word? The Father. The Father is the word. It's not Christ. Brethren, no matter how much truth one claims they have, or what light or any resources that they claim that they have is truth, when we hear Antichrist statements like this, we need to depart and give no heed to these seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, or we will become like them, lost, confused, and full of apostasy. And joining in with them, we must not have any part with it. 
And any ministry like this that are yoking up and supporting such work, we need to come out from among them and take our stand with the word of God, or you will again partake of this antichrist spirit. Remember, brethren, there are no writings in this world that will change the fact that Jesus Christ is the Word of God who did come in the flesh as the Word of God. But of course, the spirit of Antichrist, which denies Jesus as the Word of God, which has always been upon us, is alive evermore, as you have seen, in this offshoot professed remnant ministry from Vern Bates. And some of these ministries today who are yoked up with this ministry of Vern Bates, where they claim that he has some so-called original writings that supersede the Word of God, is false. Nothing in this world supersedes the Word of God. And anyone who comes to you proclaiming that their words or these supposed writings are above the Scriptures and change the testimonies of the Scriptures, is the spirit of antichrist and we've got to come out from among them and be separate said the lord then who is the word the, father. the father's the word it's not christ and i saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. It is very important that we continue to break down this Vern Bates ministry so you can understand what you're dealing with. Then, in by doing so, you shall also learn and know of a few things regarding the Godhead family that we love and serve that you can share with others. When we continue to look at Vern Bates ministry, we will begin to see why other ministries are sadly falling to pieces. For they are leading people down the wrong road of understanding even the end times for these last days. Now, through the works of Vern Bates and his supposed original writings of the beautiful prophetess Ellen G. White. Bottom line here is this. If you want the original writings of the prophetess Ellen G. White, I'll tell you how you can simply find her inspired words. It is very simple. Whatever book you're reading in the spirit of prophecy, her work will line up with the scripture and have a plain, thus saith the Lord, attached to them with two to three witnesses. So whatever books that are available to the public, when you read them, you shall know if they are her writings, which are inspired by God, or if they're not. They will not line up with scripture. It's that simple. Take note. We will be making more videos that are going to be breaking down even these supposed original writing quotes that can't even be backed up or supported or verified by scripture. And because they can't be backed up or supported by scripture, it's proof that it's not Ellen G. White's writings. It's that simple. Remember, brethren, your surety in these last days is in the word of God. And this word of God is to be the loud cry which is found in the three angels' message and the fourth angel's message of Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 through 5. And you will find the righteousness of Christ in this, in the Word of God, which will teach you the righteousness of Christ because the Word of God is Jesus, our righteousness. So read the Word of God. So here, in this video, we have Vern Bates continuing to misunderstand who the Godhead Elohim family is in heaven that we love and serve. Here we have another video or clip showing forth his understanding through a quote that he even misapplies and takes out of context completely like so many things that we have been seeing. When we look at this quote, this passage from Sister White that he uses, we will see what it clearly means and see how Vern Bates cannot understand who the Godhead is. Here is the passage that he uses and takes completely out of context. It says in Education, page 132, paragraph 2, The greatness of God is to us incomprehensible. The Lord's throne is in heaven, Psalms chapter 11, verse 4. Yet by His Spirit, 
He is everywhere present. Okay, this is a truthful saying in this passage, and it is verified by Scripture. So before I play the video in this clip, let's understand this passage first. This clearly says that by His Spirit, meaning Christ's own Spirit, for Christ is a Spirit, that He is also omnipresent through His own Spirit. Nowhere in this passage does it speak of the wonderful Father as well and the beautiful Holy Spirit of the third person in the Godhead family. It is not saying that the Holy Spirit is what makes the Christ or even the Father omnipresent and the work that the Holy Spirit does through the angels of the Lord. None of the three most highest powers in heaven need help from each other or the creation to make our omnipotent God, all-powerful God, omnipresent. The Godhead family does not need help because they are all-powerful, which means they are God, and they don't need anything or anyone to accomplish their omnipresence because they are omnipotent. When we look at the Godhead family, Elohim family, which collectively reads Father, who is Abba, Jesus Christ, the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost, all have their own spirit because the Godhead in heaven, they're spirits. The Father is a spirit, Jesus is a spirit, and the Holy Ghost is a spirit. They are all self-existing and are only one as the church is one, but consist of many members. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Just like your family has one name, one last name, but under that name there are many members, and so it is for the Godhead family. The term one is a collective term used to describe their unity in the truth and for saving mankind from their sins. And they have their own spirit to accomplish their own work in each of their own offices. These are the three most highest powers in heaven and they have their own work to do for us and they work together. However, Vern Bates has formed another antichrist opinion about what Christ and the Father, who is supreme in all, cannot do unless the third person of the Godhead family, the Holy Spirit, helps them do it through the works of the angels, which is false, heretical, and blasphemy. By misapplying this quote that you're about to see and denying the word of God being Jesus, we can clearly see that this man and those connected with him are truly misunderstanding who God is and their work and their ability as having all power in being all powerful and don't need others to make that happen. Listen to the smooth preaching and cunning craftiness of this man Vern Bates here. Then it says, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Well, let's see what Jesus did when he walked in. Exactly the same thing. Then who is the Word? The Father. The Father is the Word. It's not Christ. Because the Father gave the words to Christ, and Christ gave to the prophet, or to the angel, they gave them to the prophet. But we know that the angel don't do their work separately. The Holy Spirit is the one that directs the angels. That's how he can be present every place. This quotation, I often use this quotation, it's Education, page 132, paragraph 2. The greatness of God is to us incomprehensible. The Lord's throne is in heaven, but by His Spirit He is everywhere present. So the work of the Holy Spirit can be the same in Germany, Africa, France, Switzerland, the United States, Grants Pass, Texas, because He directs His work by the Holy Angels. This is false teaching, cunning craftiness, and a great confusion that Vern Bates is speaking of here. It is crafty how he draws the Father and the Holy Spirit 
into this quote that speaks of Jesus only to simply misrepresent, misinterpret, cause confusion about the understanding of the Godhead Elohim family and who they are in being omnipotent, meaning all-powerful and all-knowing and having all capabilities. Surely the apostasy in this world has reached into these so-called present truth ministries and those connected with Vern Bates. None of them and their work of confusion can be trusted when they clearly do not understand our Godhead in heaven. It is no wonder why these ministries cannot understand a lot of things and the power of God. And this will also be explained soon as well. To be continued. Peace. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. scriptures for years and people say well we, we have the scriptures and we don't need to have anything else but I don't think that that works for us because uh, Martin Luther had the scriptures he didn't have all the truth true uh, the Wesley's had the scriptures they didn't have all the truth we had the scriptures for years and people say well we, we have the scriptures and we don't need to have anything else but I don't think that that works for us because uh, Martin Luther had the scriptures. He didn't have all the truth. True. Uh, the Wesleys had the scriptures. They didn't have all the truth. So Lying lips are abomination to the Lord. In this video, we will see how Vern Bates claims that the loud cry of the third angel's message is not happening today because more events still need to transpire. He is purposely setting up the people to believe that the work of God is not happening today, that it is all still future. The message of truth has been given. We even understand fully the four angel's message. Thus, we are called to go proclaim the righteousness of Christ through this latter rain loud cry movement by mouth and by deeds to this world about our duty in obedience to the law of God. To claim that this work of God is, to be done, is not to be done today, but it is still future, is proof that Vern Bates and ministries connected to him like Nicholas Petula are purposely delaying the work of God and discouraging the people from doing it today. 
This type of work speaks in behalf of the Jesuit order of Rome, working and moving full steam ahead to deceive, to confuse, and to destroy those who would seek to want to do the work of God. They are being discouraged by these ministries. When you receive the message of the truth, when you understand what the Word of God is saying, like in the book of Revelation with the four angels' message, you are to not sit idle, but you are to get up and start working and not delay. Once you understand the message of truth, you are to live by it and go proclaim it and not wait. There are no more other events that need to happen to help you go do this. Go work now in the Lord's vineyard and he will give you the early and latter rain for these latter days. The early rain causes you to be converted to the truth. The latter rain that is happening in your life will help produce the fruits that the righteousness of Christ is working in your life. But in this video, you will see how Vern Bates purposely delays the righteousness of Christ. Uh, because they apply that Revelation 18 to the message of 1888. But I believe there's, there's a lot deeper meaning to that than what, what we're understanding. But aren't there people, excuse me for interrupting your thoughts there, but aren't there people who say that that loud cry message is going on today? Yes, that's exactly what they're saying. Uh, but there are some events that we can measure so uh, we can determine exactly, and let's, let's don't forget that thought, and as we go along we'll try to bring that up. Uh, there are some events that transpire so that we can know for sure when the loud cry message begins. Uh, so many, many people claim they are giving that loud cry message. In the Oregon Conference here, probably about 20 years ago, they started out one year where they finished work in four years. Well, that four has gone by five times, and this work is still not finished. In fact, I, I'm, I'm concerned today that the message is even going as well as it did 20 years ago. Isn't that discouraging? It's, yeah, it is. When it, when, it, when it gets repeated over and over and over yeah. again. In this video, Vern Bates claims that the Lord's Church is not organized, but then draws confusion to the listener by saying, we are bound by the truth. This is Babylonian confusion to those who are wanting to be connected to the Lord's Church. This is also NLP Jesuit neurolinguistic programming Jesuit tactics to confuse the listener. The Church of God is not organized, but is bound by the truth? How can that possibly be? It goes from, we're not organized, but we're bound by the truth. God's church is full of order and truth. Vern wants us to believe that the Lord's church is weak. He's trying to create lawlessness in the church of God through disorder and trying to confuse us through this neurologistic programming. This is a satanic sly move and preaching by this Babylonian teacher. Jesuits do not want us to know the truth so we cannot be bound together by the truth. This is why he is preaching confusion and hypocrisy. Uh, yes, we do have an invisible church. It's not organized. Uh, it's people all over the face of the earth that are, are bound together by the truth. And of course, we have to know what the truth is. If we don't know what the truth is, how can we be bound together? In this video, we show how Vern Bates proclaims that the church prayed for the descent of the Holy Spirit, which is the latter rain, to be given for the power and strength of the loud cry, the righteousness of Christ, going forward to do the work for the last days, which is found in the third angel's message in the fullness of the righteousness of Christ, in keeping the commandments of God and having the faith of Jesus. And he claims that the Holy Spirit never came because if you remember in the previous videos, he said that the message of the third angel's message was not pure enough for the descent of the Holy Spirit, putting down the work of God and flat out lying. So 
What we need to understand is, when the message of truth came through 18 Jones and Wagner in the 1888 General Conference meeting of Minneapolis, they rejected it because we know that there were many Jesuits infiltrating that church and bringing it down to the Laodicean condition of lukewarmness, self-righteousness, and not understanding the work of God. The truth is that the Holy Spirit did come down and they went forth after receiving the latter rain, proclaiming the message of truth in the third angel's message and going in the spirit of Elijah and conquering through the latter rain power and might. Notice also how Vern Bates continually puts down the work of God and constantly discouraging those who are listening. It is your privilege today that when you receive the message of truth that is found in the third angel's message and uniting it with the fourth angel of Revelation chapter 18, you are to go forth and conquer and you will have the power to do it through the Holy Spirit falling upon your life. This man, Vern Bates, is a deceiver, a false teacher, and preaches false prophecies and he is very dangerous. Peace. And this influence that comes is, has to be the direct influence of the Holy Spirit. And then we're going to see this great change that will take place. Uh, I, I've often thought of a quotation that I've read in that uh, the, Al, the Alpha and Omega Repostasy by Elder Gilbert. <clears throat> he makes reference there in 1924 how the church uh, made a plea for the descent of the Holy Spirit at their conference, their general conference. But of course it never happened. It never, it never happened. I think that God did have a special regard for Elder Jones and Wagner. He did have a special regard for them. They were young men, uh, very determined. I've read some of his articles. I haven't read all of them. I have not been that interested in them. But I do know that as years went on, he became quite impetuous, uh, pretty hard to deal with. Here we have, in another video, Vern Bates, the false teacher, 
claiming that the three angels' message is not a pure enough message for the Holy Spirit to do His work. The three angels' message is to unite with the fourth angel's message to bring about a global understanding that we are to do the works of righteousness and performing the works of Christ and keeping the law of God and uniting it with the Holy Spirit in proclaiming we must come out of Babylon from doing the works of unrighteousness. This work is going forward today and this is why you have this world turning into a great big global lockdown to silence the message of truth. So here you have another ministry and other ministries alike proclaiming that the Holy Spirit has not come down to do the work of God. And Vern Bates claims that the three angels message is not a pure enough message for the Holy Spirit to work. Then he goes and changes the subject completely, which is a fruit of Babylon, where they speak on a subject and then completely toss the people around to confuse them and bring them into another subject that has no connection with what's being said here. Peace. This angel then was to lighten the earth with his glory. Did you notice this next verse? And he cried mightily with a what? There it is again. There's that strong voice. Uh, Bible comments section 7, 980. The expression, the loud voice, or that is given with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now we believe that's how the loud cry message will be given. It will be given by the power, the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. But you see, he has to have a pure message before he can be present. He will not be, he has to have a pure message before he can be present. He will not be there. That's what this says. This is from the review article. And we're going to look. It's on uh, October 22, 1895. October 22, 1895. Satan accomplished the fall of man. And since that time, it has been his work to efface in man the image of God and to stamp upon human hearts his own image. Possessing supremacy in guilt, he claims supremacy for himself and exercises over his subjects the power of royalty. Now, when you see someone that would want to lift himself above his brother, those are attributes that we can recognize. Put one person down to elevate yourself. That's what Satan's whole object is. In this video, you are going to witness once again the false teacher Vern Bates make another claim that is absolutely ridiculous, where he is now saying that the second angel's message did not accomplish its work. My Lord and his work will always be accomplished. This is Vern Bates again putting down the work of God. Many were converted by the second angel's message. Thousands had accepted that second angel's message, but many were so disappointed through the great disappointment that they and their lip service had fled away from the truth, leaving the pioneers to this work, and they were heavily blessed. They realized the mistake that they had made, that Jesus was not coming back to the earth, but in that time he was moving from the holy place to the most holy place to do the investigative judgment. The work of God found in the second angel's message was accomplished and is getting accomplished and the work is going forward and this is why you see today the three angels message uniting with the fourth in the loud cry with the latter rain proclaiming with a loud voice in this world the truth of God that is found in those messages and because of that work going forward and accomplishing its work you see what is happening in this world today and why they are locking it down. Vern Bates makes it appear that the work of God is a failure once again and it is all still in the future. Thus he is trying to slow down and destroy the work of God. Be of good cheer brethren because the work is continuing and this world is about to close. So keep preaching the truth and see how this minister and like-minded ones like remnant of God 
with Nicholas Pachula is echoing the same type of nonsense. Peace. Uh, let's, let's use a couple of verses in Revelation chapter 14. <clears throat> I want to read from verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Now, if you'll notice, when that seventh verse begins, it says, saying with a loud voice. That's extremely important, and I never hear anyone make a mention of that loud voice. Because when we read the eighth verse of the second angel's message, listen to what it says. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. He didn't have a loud voice. In other words, the second angel's message did not accomplish its work at that time when it was given. It did a mighty work, and about 50,000 people did accept that message, but within a few weeks, a few months later, they all had gone back to the regular churches, and that, that work absolutely did not accomplish its task. Here we have in another video regarding Vern Bates, this false teacher, making the claims that the pure testimonies of truth can only be found in the edited and unedited testimonies from the spirit of prophecy. The true spirit of prophecy again and the true testimonies can be found in the King James Bible where they are unedited. But he makes no mention of the King James Bible, which tells me this is a tactic of the Roman Catholic Jesuit order to deceive the people and to lure them away from the true testimonies that are recorded in the King James Bible. So here you have this false teacher again trying to discourage us away from the King James Bible and to put our trust in other books. Peace. Testimony number 27. In ancient times, God spoke to men by the mouths of prophets and apostles. In these days, he speaks to them by the testimonies of his spirit. There was never a time when God more earnestly instructed his people concerning his will and the course that he would have them pursue than now. So it's the testimony for you and I today that every shred of doubt has been removed. Now, what testimony? That's our big problem. Because we have two sets of testimony. We have the original set, and we have, of course, the set that has been produced for the public today. Now, if we... In this video, we have Vern Bates claiming the original writings of Great Controversy 1858, which we know through all the findings that we have on our website, this book has been also tampered with, and there's nothing original about it. If you want the original Great Controversy, the original SOP, the original testimonies, go to your King James Bible. That is the original Spirit of Prophecy, testimonies, that we need for these last days, which has not been tampered with by the Jesuit order. The safeguard that we have for these last days is the King James Bible alone. The SDA Church and others would proclaim that we are causing others to lose faith in the spirit of prophecy and the testimonies. But that is far from the truth. It's the other way around. We are not causing others to lose faith in the true and unedited testimonies and spirit of prophecy of the King James Bible. They are doing it through saying that we must read the Great Controversy 1858 instead of the King James Bible to get the end time truths. This is far from the truth. If you want to know what is going to happen in these last days, what has happened in the past, what is going on today, open your King James Bible. 
and understand the spirit of prophecy that's written therein and the testimonies that it provides that is unedited for us to understand all we need for these last days. Peace. Uh, the book Great Controversy 58, we call that the original Great Controversy. Others say the 1884 is the original Great Controversy. But uh, the 58 was written probably, what, 40 years before? 1858, 68, 78, 88, 30. well, 30 years, at least 30 years before. So in, in my way of thinking, this great controversy would be called the original one, am I correct? That's what I would get. That's what she called it, didn't she call it the great controversy? Yes. Isn't that the way it was printed to begin That's with? That's exactly the way it was printed. We have the original book here. In this video, you have Vern Bates once again trying to discourage those who turn from their sins and become a minister. Just like with myself, I was a very sinful man growing up in the world, but Christ picked me up, He changed my life, and the Lord ordained us to do this work. Just like with the Apostle Paul, who had killed Christians for a living, the chief of sinners, but yet he became the great apostle for the Lord Jesus Christ. And thus, we can do the same thing and the same type of work of repentance in doing the work of the three angels' message, uniting it with the fourth and coming out of this great apostasy, proclaiming the righteousness of Christ through the works that we are doing today for the Lord in his vineyard. In this latter rain, loud cry, third angels' message movement. Vern Bates is clearly trying to discourage the people from doing the work of God. We are not to listen to people like this, but we are to listen to Christ who can change us and help us do this work in the righteousness of Christ and perfecting the very law this world has been taught to forget. To make them important, well this person was on drugs and he was an alcoholic and he was this and he was that, but all of a sudden now he's become a minister. Uh, I'm not sure that God is pleased with that type of a thing. Vern Bates feels the loud cry, the righteousness of Christ, is only partly true. The truth is, the righteousness of Christ is found in obedience to the law of God. Faith comes through our works, showing to this world that the three angels' message, which is the righteousness of Christ, that we are to come out of Babylon, remove ourselves from her unrighteous ways, get out of her apostasy and have no connection to her is our message today, through those four angels' messages. By doing this, you show forth that the fourth angel's message and power is working in your life and the latter rain is causing you to bear the fruits of doing this work. If you are not doing this work, then there is no latter rain falling in your life and you need to examine yourself. If anyone is telling you that this work is future, they are liars and they are working for Rome. Rome does not want you to do this work because it exposes them and their god Satan. This is why the SDA church that is run by a bunch of Jesuits claims the righteousness of Christ is later. This is why Nicholas Petula, Vern Bates, and so many others want you to stay quiet and think that this work is two to three years from now. They are clearly doing the works of Jesuits to destroy the work of God. Furthermore, Vern Bates insinuates this is not absolutely truth that is found in the three angels' message which unites with the fourth. And thus Vern Bates is stirring up doubt in the minds of the listeners that this message of righteousness is only partly true. It is absolute truth that the righteousness of Christ is found in these four angels' messages. It is all the truth in that these messages that we are to come out of Babylon, apostasy, and do the works of Christ, righteousness, or die eternally in the end. And the power from heaven will come to us in this latter rain season today for these latter day people doing this work in standing in the message of the righteousness of Christ and to proclaim it through our visible works and through our mouth saying with a loud voice and declaring all four angels' messages. If you refuse to do that, you are not 
connecting yourself with God and thus you are receiving no latter rain to do this work. This is why so many of the five foolish virgins today in their churches are standing idle. Next, Vern Bates and what he proclaims through his supposed original writings is also how this fourth angel will not come down in form until there is a sense of urgency. Well, looking at the world today, we can all clearly see the signs of the time proclaimed that we are at the very end of all things and Sunday laws are about to happen. The world has been in a sense of urgency to proclaim the loud cry through the offered latter rain from the conception of understanding these four angels' messages to do the works of Christ's righteousness and depart from unrighteousness. We are not to wait two to three years from now to do this work. It is now. They've been saying do not do this work since 1888. And anyone who will listen to the mouths of Babylon is going to be in big trouble with the Lord when he returns. And you'll be found as an unfaithful servant. This message has been proclaimed even in the time of the pioneers. But for the SDAGC church that is run by a bunch of Jesuits, they rejected the Holy Spirit in 1888 Minneapolis meeting who was to lighten the earth with God's glory through the children of God who would take on the work of presenting Christ's righteousness to a sinful world as Ellen G. White and the pioneers did in receiving the early and latter rain and they produce the fruits that God and these messages were working with them. And we are to carry on this work today. This is not some future event. This takes place the moment you understand these messages. So here you have Vern Bates doing the work of a trained Jesuit deceiver. You know, Elder Bates, I've been wanting to do this study with you about the loud cry message for some time. And I was wondering, we're going to video this thing and, and share it with some other folks as well. But I was wondering if you would give us a study on the, on the loud cry message. What is it? Uh, who is it for? Uh, how did it get started? How come we're just hearing about it? It comes out of the Bible. And how come it is that we're just really kind of, I guess, of, of late learning what it's all about? Yeah. I say of late. Uh, apparently, <clears throat> the current teaching is that it's the message of righteousness by faith. Now, we, we feel that this is partly true. But there are other things involved in the Angel of Revelation 18 that we're not really getting the truth on. And uh, that's the the Angel of uh, Revelation, the, the loud cry messenger, the loud cry message. We call it the other angel, <clears throat> the fourth uh, angel. The fourth angel. Uh, there's actually a quotation in number 27 of the testimonies that speaks about the the form of the fourth will be with you when there's uh, an emergency or, or whatever it might be, the form of the fourth. Well, we know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were cast into the fire.